story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories around the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Good evening, Court TV News on the R. I am Tulu Ojeumi. Unconfirmed reports say a suicide bomber was behind today's bomb attack in Kano. The bomb went off on the premises of Kano State Polytechnic a few minutes ago at a sport where students were checking their results on the notice board. The police have confirmed the latest bomb attack, which is a theft in four days. More details in the subsequent bulletins. A bomb blast in Potterscum, Yobe State on Tuesday night has allegedly claimed an unknown number of lives, though there has been no official confirmation of the casualty figure from the blast. Many are, however, feared dead due to the blast occurring in a very busy part of the city. No group has claimed responsibility for the explosion, but many will point accusing fingers at the terrorist group Boko Haram. We'll bring you details in our subsequent bulletins. Nigeria has formally launched a new 64-page passport. The new travel document is meant for frequent travelers and will be used side by side with the current 32-page passport. The new passport was formally unveiled at the presidential villa on Wednesday with President Goodluck Jonathan Tosken Nigerians to protect the country's image. After the launching of the 64 page deep passport, uh, Mr. President, and the captain of the details, uh, the passport is now ready for presentation and acceptance. Yes, yes. One thing one must note today is not the issue of a uh, before page e passport that is key to Nigerians, but the security of our passport. If our passport could be easily fixed by criminals, then we have problems. One thing again is that how can Nigerians get passports easily, especially Nigerians living outside these countries? Because wherever I travel to, there is this complaint of how they get the Nigerian peace passport. Not necessarily this is the peace, peace, as a for peace transport, a passport, but how do they get uh, transport? So the ministry must look into this. And uh, what affects almost every traveler is how efficient and committed are the immigration officers working at our airports. Visitors that come into the country have different impressions about. Uh, the immigration officers. So they must improve. They are the image of this country. How they handle visitors to this country matters so much. Meantime, the acting governor of Adamawa, Hamadi Fentiri, says government has concluded plans to probe impeach Governor Motolan Yako over a two billion naira debt profile. Venturi announced this in a broadcast to people of the state in Yola on Tuesday. He added that the government will cooperate with all anti-graft agencies to recover stolen state funds. The acting governor revealed that his interim administration inherited a debt profile of more than 12 billion naira in the statutory revenue account alongside liabilities amounting to 70 billion naira said to be diverted to non-viable projects. Fentiri, who maintains that he was committed to handing over a better Adama to the next administration, says local government will be treated properly as an effective chair of government through prompt release of funds. He urged traditional rulers, religious leaders, community leaders, security agencies and the people of the state in general to participate fully in bringing back the lost glory of Adamawa. Now, former Niger Delta militant Asari Dokubo says 
that opposition leader Mamadou Buhari masterminded the recent bomb and gun attack on himself to discredit the government. The leader of the Niger Delta People's Volunteer Force also denied an online report linking him to a bomb suspect arrested by troops at the bomb scene in Kaduna. Asari said this at a news conference in Abuja where he also faulted President Goodluck Jonathan's comment on the Buhari attack. If good luck Jonathan is not an Ijoma, I will not be bothered what happened to Nigeria. I will not. That's the truth. If my name is not dragging, if Buhari and others are not attempting to kill me, by all means necessary, I will not also be bothered about what happened. Because in the fullness of time, Nigeria will go the way of Soviet Union and other nations, which are have their foundation on sinking sand. The recent spate of bombings in Kano State has further raised questions about the success of the fight against terrorism in Nigeria. Speaking on a flagship program called Digest, Lagos-based lawyer Festus Kiam condemns the act and calls for a proper military solution to solving Boko Haram insurgency in Nigeria. The clear threat we see here is a threat to our democracy and our unity as a country. And the earlier we deal with this situation, I think the better for all of us. What we are witnessing is a situation where the government has um, not shown a capacity at all to curtail uh, this situation. The government has not shown a capacity to deal decisively with this situation. Um, what, we are just hearing some kind of stereotypes from government. Stereotypes. Government keeps telling, if it happens, government comes and condemns what has happened tells people to be vigilant, tell people, they tell people that we are on top of the situation, and that is all you hear from government. It is, this is a clear um, case of um, uh, ineptitude by government, purely a military solution, the way it is now, because they, have, they, have, they, have, they are deaf to dialogue. Don't forget that they are deaf to dialogue. They are deaf to any kind of um, uh, rapprochement. The Minister of State for Defence, Musile Obanikoro, has assured residents and business operators along the Papa Express Road that the federal government is committed to making the road more terrible. He made this known during a tour of the road in Apapa alongside the Nigerian Navy, or Motayalo Hospitals. The deplorable state of the Lagos Apapa Express Road has raised a lot of concern in the past few months. Lagos State Governor Babatunde Fashala visited the area on several occasions to ascertain the compliance of the directives given to tanker drivers to desist from parking on the road while calling on the federal government to wake up to its responsibilities. The Minister of State for Defence took a tour of the road and commended the effort of the Nigerian Navy. He encouraged the Lagos State Government to continue in its efforts of making the road more terrible. There is need for the state to have a permanent holding bay for the truck uh, drivers. It is when we have that, then we can have a radio link between the port and the stakeholders so that whenever the port is ready to have them, then there will be radio, there will be a radio communication and then they can now proceed to go in there. That we cannot afford not to do as quickly as possible. Representatives of the Association of Apapa Residents and Business Operators say they had to be a lot of pain daily due to the bad condition of the road. They commended the Nigerian Navy of its support and called on all the government parastatals to follow suit. If all the agencies are able to come together in one committee and work together, this matter will be not fully resolved, but it will create an environment where traffic can flow and the people who need to go to the ports can get to the ports. The gridlocking at Papa became a concern to every Nigerian. And Navy uh, they want to provide security within the water, waterfronts and its environs, a papa. And because of the security threat that this grill dock is causing, they cannot sit down and fold their arms not to interfere. The flag officer commanding Western Naval Command, Sami Aladi, says the intervention of the Nigerian Navy to clear the road was not only to free the area of traffic gridlock, but also to reduce the security threat in the area. What we are doing particularly is to partner with other stakeholders because uh, we cannot do it alone. And as a matter of fact, my duty is not to clear road. But because of the security implication of what is happening in Apapa, you know, we had to 
you know, take action, you know, to, to make sure that um, traffic, you know, uh, flows, you know, in Apapa area. Residents of Apapa have expressed hope that the frequent visits of top government officials will translate to the construction of the road. Or Mota Yualo, Call TV News, Lagos. Scientists under the aegis of the Association of Medical Laboratory Scientists of Nigeria in the Cross River State are calling on the federal government to urgently put in place effective emergency response mechanism to prevent the outbreak of the Ebola virus in the country. They made their position known at a one-day workshop in Calabar entitled Ebola Virus, an Emerging Global Challenge. Chairman of the association, Gloria Archibong, says it has become imperative for the Nigerian public to be properly educated as the threat was on the increase daily. She appealed to the federal government to ensure that mechanisms were put in place to check the virus in the country. A consultant microbiologist at the University of Calabar, Marco Ose, added that it was time for Nigeria to take the threat of the virus seriously. Still on Ebola, United States health officials say they are monitoring the Ebola outbreak in Africa. They said the risk of the deadly disease spreading to the U.S. is remote. The Center for Disease Control sent a health alert to U.S. doctors about the outbreak. There are no travel restrictions to the West African region hit by the disease. But last month, the center issued a mid-level travel advisory for health workers. Two American aid workers in Liberia have contracted the Ebola virus and it has killed the Liberian husband of an American woman who said he could have easily brought the disease home to the U.S. The family of Patrick Sawyer, who died on July 24, recently returned to the U.S. for a visit. The CDC said they were not affected. Officials stressed people are not contagious until they show symptoms and the Sawyer's family left Liberia days before he fell ill. Sawyer, a consultant for Liberia's finance ministry, collapsed on arrival at the Lagos airport. The governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in the forthcoming Oshun election, Iyolao Mishara, says his government will put in place a structure that will recognize the traditional institution in the state if voted into office. Omishiro made the statement when he took his campaign train to Elisha local government area of the state. Frank Omalape has details. Flanked by his supporters, Omishiro's first point of call was the palace of Owa Elisha, Oba Gabriel Adikli to pay homage. While berating the speech of neglect for traditional rulers in the state, a measure of sensitive government of the People's Democratic Party will restore the traditional structure when voted into office. But because we have put, we have, we have socially put the traditional uh, setting behind us, we are putting the governance, the political structure far ahead of traditional setting. That's not be used against us in the issue of Boko Haram, other disbalanced tendencies. So the government of PDP coming on board in less than three weeks' time, by the grace of God, ensure a pride of place, a rightful place, a successful and a fully integrated traditional setting. Responding to accusations by the ruling All Progressive Congress in the state that the PDP is an exploitative party, Ben for Lasha degrees dismissed the APC statement. So for we that are supposed to be taking um, care of the lives and the property of people, we will now turn around to fight the same people. This is the propaganda of the IS order. It's an high type propaganda and it's not going to go anywhere because on the 9th of August, the people of Oposhu State will speak and they will speak with their votes. Some of the PDP stalwarts present were optimistic of the party's victory in the coming election. Already the SABC, they are very jittery. They are calling for postponement of election. So, but I can assure you that we rely on the grace of God and on the grace of the people. We win the election all over our states. We don't bring people together at once, you know, every time and say we are having majority. So I think we have communicated with the people of our state, and I think they are desirous of a change. And that's why I believe that Tomi Shode will be successful 
come 9th August. The governorship candidate says the election outcome is as a result of grassroots campaign. Have so as door to door, neighbor to neighbor. And of course, it's obvious you can see what's happening here. It has been good reception across everywhere. We have blessings everywhere. And it shows that Osho people are ready for a change. The Oshun governorship elections are just days away, and efforts by political parties have intensified and seeking to win voters. Frank Malape, OTV News Elision. Now let's talk about food. During the regional governance of Obafe Miaulo in the southwest of Nigeria, the foresight to have a food supply hub for the region was given priority, resulting to settlements like Ago in Oshun State. Rashid Rashid takes a look at the functionality of settlements like these and the efforts of government to resuscitate them. His report. An offshoot of the Elisha Farm Institute graduates of 1960 brought to pioneer the settlement for the purpose of producing food for the Western region, an initiative of the then Western Region Premier, Obafemi Awolowo. The settlement was pioneered with 69 people, but sadly, it can only boast of two left. Samuel Adeleke, one of the surviving pioneers, explains how life was then. Life was very good then, though we lack good roads then because we normally go to Elisha through Ijebu. But life was okay. A goal, though still a farm settlement with agriculture at its main occupation, can now boast of considerable population that needs all social amenities, though some residents say the Oshun State government is trying its best. I'm enjoying living here, but we still want government to come and help us to add more to what we, they have already done for us here. The government provides us electricity with a good road. And uh, we even we see the water. They provide us water. With agriculture being the main occupation of our goal, which shares border with Egypt, we go in Ogun State, any border in your state. Residents appeal to the government to do more, so as for the settlement to serve its main purpose of being the food hub for the southwest region. Mali we need so many things. In the aspect of education, aspect of health. And even as a result of the communication, we need the mask. So our electricity is not uh, on since uh, far the electricity has been donated here. So we want them to help us on this matter. Speaking of the giant strides of the Arab Shula government in boosting agriculture and at the same time checking rural urban migration, special advisor to Governor Arab Shula on rural development. Kunle Ige says the government will not rest on its earth to bring to the people the dividends of democracy enjoyed. I think we've virtually touched the lives of virtually every citizen in rural areas in the state of Oshun. We've done quite well touching the rural areas. And as you've discovered, some, you, we don't even call some rural anymore, we call them semi-rural. Because again, communities are developing at a quite a rapid rate in Oshun State. We, we've done the best we can under the circumstances that we find ourselves. We've done quite well touching the rural areas. Advocates of food security say adequate food supply can only be guaranteed when centers like these are properly funded and modern crops injected so as to promote modern farming for bumper harvest. Rashid Rashid. Or TV news and go. When we come back from this break, we'll tell you how doctors in Gaza put a tiny baby from her mother's womb in an emergency cesarean section. Stay with us. Nigerians continue to Tonight, the city of Lagos brings a dog as all rules. Be the first to know from the north, south, east, west and around Africa. Our federal high we courses. break the news. We are one Nigerian. Now you can catch all the actions live as the news breaks. We are Call TV News. Welcome to Call TV News. A 24 hour news station. From time immemorial, women 
a bad life shaped character and by extension influenced the society. Morimi of Ife and Moten of Benin, Queen Aminat of Zaria, all women of influence and power. Whether it's before election, after election. How ironical. Women being so powerful yet have few grounds in decision making. I see you as weak and I see you as a wife to a man. We are talking women in politics. A woman will be bold enough to stand up and say, I want to become president of Nigeria. Only on Core TV News. Now, when doctors in Gaza put the tiny baby from her mother's womb in an emergency cesarean section, the woman had already been dead for an hour. The 23-year-old mother was eight months pregnant when an Israeli tank shell hit her home in central Gaza town of Del al -Bala. The report. Shema in only breath through an oxygen mask. Named after a mother, she is being called Gaza's miracle baby for the incredible story of a survivor. Shema was born during the latest Israeli assault on the Gaza Strip to a mother who was already dead. Killed in their family home in Deir al Bala by an Israeli bombardment. She was buried under three floors. She spent an hour and a half under the rubble. What did she do? She was 23 years old and married for 13 months. What did she do? Brought to the hospital after being pulled from the remains of their home, Shema's young mother was declared dead by the doctors. But then, they noticed that her belly was still moving. The doctors noticed that this young woman was around nine months pregnant. They saw movement in her stomach, so they called the midwives and decided to deliver the baby immediately. Despite this rapid response, baby Shema spent over an hour in the womb of her dead mother. A miracle baby there in Gaza. Now, the European Union has uh, prepared to hit Russia, where it's hurt with tough economic sanctions, even as Moscow insisted that the West can do it little harm and showed no sign of reversing the course in Ukraine. The leaders of the United States, Germany, France, Britain and Italy have put aside their differences and agreed for the international community to impose further costs on Russia. Ambassadors from the EU's 28 member states are holding final talks. They intend to limit Russian access to European financial markets, restrict sales of arms and dual-use goods, and prevent the export of sensitive technology, especially what is particularly in the interesting energy sector. is the talk of sectoral sanctions, of phase three sanctions. In other words, um, measures that would not only target a very um, hand-picked group of uh, Putin cronies, but um, measures that would target specific sectors of the Russian economy. But I think the big um, galvanizing element here was the shooting down of the airliner. The European Union can't afford to be seen to be divided and to be hesitant in putting up some kind of opposition to Russia and can't let much more time tick by um, after, you know, the evidence piles, uh, seemingly, of course, it's not yet established, uh, suggesting a Russian involvement. The ability of the EU to target um, entire sectors of the Russian economy is very likely to have an effect on, on the crisis. Um, it'll have a political effect. It'll erode the higher levels of popularity that Putin's been enjoying since the crisis started. Um, you know, after a few months, once the first effects of the sanctions begin to uh, uh, ground in. That's all. Thanks for watching. I'm Tolu Ojeomi. Good evening.